Hello! Welcome to another video on my channel. Today's subject is this beautiful machine here. This is my beloved <laughs> Amiga 2000 from Camelot. You of course have the Amiga series, that's probably why you are here. And yeah, this is one of my all-time favorite retro computers. So, in this video I'll take a deeper look at this machine with you and I'll open the lid and watch inside. I'll boot it up and give you a short demonstration and show you what upgrade cards and stuff this machine has. Other Amiga 2000s probably don't have and why this thing is so special and what I really like about it. Yeah, so let's move on and do it. So here we have my machine open and you can see everything that's inside of here I hope. Expect this card here, but I'll show what this is later. And underneath here, under the drive caddies in the Amiga 2000, you have your CPU socket in which you can plug an accelerator board. In this case, I have a 14 MHz 68010 turbo card with an, ex um, an extra IDE bus which is connected with the CF card reader in the back here, this one, with this ID cable here, with this white one, and it has 4 megabytes of SRAM on board as well. The thing is um, a DIY project from the a1k.org forum. Thank you Matze for this really nice project, I really appreciate that. And this is a really nice card, it's stable, it's cool and the only thing you need to get it running is a soldering iron and you need a modified kickstart ROM but the file is available and you can burn it in an EP ROM or yeah, let this do for you. Um, and on the memory card, turbo card, whatever it is, I have an additional 2MB SRAM board um, from the A1K forum also a DIY project, so I have 6 megabytes of fast run. And now it gets really interesting, because that was everything on the Amiga side that's interesting to know in this machine here. The very interesting part comes here in the Zorro and Isis section of the machine. And this here is a single board computer. This is a single board computer which contains a Intel Core 2 Duo processor and 1GB of RAM and everything. This is practically a complete ATX PC, modern PC pretty much on an ISA and PCI card. The PCI connector is down there but it's completely unused on this machine. Only the ISA portion is used because the Amiga 2000 has the ISA bus there. And when you plug this in there, you have practically a PC in your Amiga. And this is a really, really nice thing because I, I love this board. I bought it new old stock for next to nothing pretty much. And I still have the original box laying around. If you want to, I can show a photo of that. Yeah. I'll put a photo in, look at the screen, there you have it. And this card here is connected over the ISA bus with this board and it's a Sound Blaster Pro version 1. And no, I'm not running any modern operating systems on this, even if I could do, like Windows XP or Windows 7 or something like that, I am running MS-DOS and Windows 3.11 on this. I clocked it down with CPU cache off and such things because then it's not too fast for the old experience and the memory is limited to 16 megabytes even if one gigabyte is installed in here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And this video adapter which is on board of here, it's a video chip that is VESA compiled and that's really cool because you can use SVGA256 patched drivers for like Windows and games and all that. There's a patch that is svgaptch.zip and in there you can patch your svga256 drivers to run with any Visa compiled card or chip which is like on here. So I don't need to sacrifice an 
additional ISIS log for just the graphics card. You are connected to this board as a single board computer here is a um, compact flash card reader like on the Amiga side. It's exactly the same model and it goes over IDE into this. It has an IDE controller on board. Yeah, that's pretty easy I think. It is, has a 2GB compact flash card in there running in PIO 0 16-bit uh, multi-board DMA mode if you can use that for anything. <laughs> Also here are two serial connectors, COM1 and COM2 connected to it, and two USB connectors. So I can use USB if I ever have to do for like external floppy disk drives and all that, because these both here are Amiga floppies and I don't have any PC floppies internally. So I can use the USB one if I need. Now that's pretty much it on the ISA and Zara bus, I don't have any Zorro cards in my machine here at the moment, but that's not a problem at all. The five and a quarter bay here is completely empty, there's nothing in it. I plan to insert a CD-ROM drive for the PC side of the Amiga for that. That would be pretty cool because I could use the CD-ROM uh, as a data storage of course, and with the CD audio cable to the Sun Blaster card, I can play CDs back on this. As I don't have a CD drive on my stereo down there, it's in the shelf. Probably have seen that early on in my videos. Yeah, I don't have a CD player in there, and that would come in handy because I would be able to play CDs in my little cozy corner here. Then <laughs> that would, would be pretty cool. Yeah, power supply is original. That is not modified in any way, but I want to change the capacitors and all that later on because I think that is, yeah, that's necessary. On the Amiga board everything has been done by somebody else, not by me. All the capacitors have been changed. The battery leakage down here, that was a bad battery leakage, uh, that has been repaired completely. So this thing is working perfectly like a charm now. What this lead here is, yeah. The SBC needs a 4 pin ADX power thing, and I have just connected this up via a Molex adapter. So because 12 volts are on these Molex plugs here in the Amiga 2000, and we can use that. Then. Yeah, I think let's move on and power this beast up. So I'm back here. This machine's closed again. The lid is on here, and I think that was pretty impressive inside. I think it's a really cool expansion pack for the Amiga 2000, but of course it's on not old hardware, but it's new hardware, it's reliable, it's cheaper than old stuff, and it's yeah nicer to handle because this stuff has better documentation and all that, and you will get replacement parts easier. So, but now, I, to I told you that I'll turn this machine on now, and exactly that's what I'll do. And yeah, let me turn this on. So now let's turn the Amiga 2000 on here. So power release on. Hard drive access. And we have a little beep of the PC card. That's not from the Amiga itself. And here it is booting, it's black, of course, like on almost every Amiga. And here we have Auto Add RAM tool. This uh, makes the six megabytes of fast RAM available to the system. And yeah, here we are on my Amiga 2000 workbench. This has yeah one megabyte of chip mem. A little bit is used by that, and six megabyte of fast RAM. Almost everything is available still here. And this is a version 40.42, the same like I have on my Amiga 1200. It's 3.1, and this version is styled in a 3. Point, uh, not 3.1, styled in a 1.3 color, color scheme and icon scheme. If I open the system directory for example here, which is on my CF card, we have a 64 megabyte partition, which, which is having all these 1.3 icons, but indeed 
it's workbench 1.0. Uh, why do I always mix up these numbers up? <laughs> yeah, it's a workbench 3.1 in a 1.3 style. Damn, that's confusing with those numbers. So, of course, everything's here from 3.1, and yeah. We have a full workbench 3.1 on this, and of course I have my games partitions and programs that partition, but yeah, the names are in German here. Spiele is games, Programme is programs, Dateien is files, and temp is temp, of course, and yeah, that should be pretty easy to understand. For today's video I have set the workbench back to English, so that we can understand better what's going on here. Otherwise I have it in German, of course, <laughs> when I just play around here. Yeah, and everything on my system here, like this info, is of course installed on the CF card. So, let's do a speed test. It's computing the speed of the A1K.org um, accelerator card by Matze. Really nice card, as I've already said. And we get 1536. Yeah, dry stones. Oh, I think that's okay for an Amiga 2000. And here we already see the 68010 with 14 or 20 megahertz. The comment is excellent. I think it's excellent, really. So, yeah. And here's my custom 499 3.1 Kickstarter ROM, which I had burned into an uh, EP ROM. This is pretty cool on boards. And here is the 64K ROM of the IE thing. And yeah, that was it. But this is <laughs> cold coffee on this side here. Amiga, you know that it's a pretty basic Amiga system. But now let me use my KVM switch box, which is standing right there. You can see it in this image. But let me switch over to the PC side. So, a few beeps. Let me adjust the color a little bit. So there we are on the Microsoft MS-DOS prompt, let me kind of type this in here, it's version 6.22 and I think that's really nice because it's running beside the Amiga version, the Workbench version, and they are running at the same time, it's really cool, one and the other, completely independently. You can do on both sides something and they not interfere in any way. A future project of me should be... Uh, uh, the program PC2 Amiga. This is a program that you install on PC and Amiga side and you can link both up with a serial cable to make the contents of the PC partitions available in an Amiga thing, uh, in, an, in an Amiga path, so that you can exchange files easily. I'll make a video about that later and yeah, drive that works a lot. It's a third party software of course. And I don't know whether that's any good or not, because this is of course not a real bridge board or something. It's just this, yeah, single board computer, but of course it's much more powerful and it's, I think, a lot cooler than a 386 SX, because it's just faster and you can play games like Doom and everything on that. Uh, let me go to the Doom directory and CD, I have to search for that quickly, I have it on my keyboard which is hidden behind here, <laughs> sorry for that, CD Doom, and now let me run some Doom, there we have it, Doom is starting up, need my other mouse here, it's my Amiga mouse, it's pink of course, I don't have another working one here at, at the moment, so, and there we have Doom, let me turn on the audio quickly, so that you can hear something, and hear the audio things, so set it to aux, So, and it's running pretty sluggish as you can see, that's not really nice in the demo mode here, but it's not any better if I make a new game and just try it out on that. So, it's running sluggish and not really nicely, but that is due to the currently disabled CPU cache, which I have on my single board computer card here at the moment. And I have a tool that is called CPU Cache, and I can turn it on back if I really need it. And now it's currently enabled, so not every program works with that, so I turn it off frequently. 
So let's run it again. So there we are in Doom again. And it seems to be much faster. I don't want to load a game, I want to make a new game. Yeah, and it looks really much faster. And indeed it is. It's fully playable in, I think, really these 35 FPS maximum of Doom. And this is a really, really nice frame rate and it's fun to play. And of course, with this Sound Blaster Pro, it's, yeah, <laughs> it has nice audio as well. So let's rush through this level quickly. It's level 1, so it's fairly easy. I love Doom. I really hate him. Let me alone. Ah, oh, man. On the top there, this guy. I hate him. I hate him so much. He kills me so often here with his fire malls. So. Everybody dead here? Yes. Okay. So let's kill him. Let me alone with this. Okay. So. Collect every item that is lying around here. And go into the exit. Pick everything up here and yeah, there we are. Can your standard Amiga 1200, 500 or 2000, whatever, do this without any horribly expensive 060 cards or whatever, or with even with a 2386 card? I don't believe so. This is awesome. And as I've said, the graphics chip on the SBC single board computer is Visa compilant. So yeah. That is really nice. So leave Doom here. Ah, this keyboard is laying around here behind the camera. That's a bit not so nice. So let's launch Windows 3.1. Let me quickly remove this. So there we are in Windows 3.1. This is 3.11 actually. It's, li it's licensed to me, Master from a1k.org. And we have about, yeah, 13 and a half megabyte of RAM free here. The one gigabyte has been limited to 16 or 15 megabytes, so that it is not too much for most of the DOS applications. So, yeah, that was the PC side of it. I don't have anything that is really spectacular to see on here as well. But yeah, pretty much that was my Amiga 2000. But let's switch back to the Amiga side and yeah. Check something else out. Swap the mouse again. Yeah, not this way around. Here, there it is. My pink Amiga mouse. Okay, so now here's my WHD load game directory. And of course, <laughs> I love playing games on the Amiga. You can see it here are tons and dozens of games on my Amiga 2000. Like on my Amiga 1200 as well. There's so many on these. And yeah, I will pretty much share my gaming experiences on the Amiga with you in the near future. So if I check out a new game and don't know it yet, or just play a game like uh, let's test or let's play thing, then I'll <laughs> put it online on my channel. And if you want to see it, yeah, subscribe and then you'll get informed about everything that you need. Don't forget to turn notifications on, of course, because you won't miss out anything then. So yeah, I think that was it from this video today. And yeah, I really appreciate that you were around here and you would make really happy with a like or subscribe, actually. And yeah, if you enjoy my videos, <laughs> let's meet up soon here. Bye!